this video is going to be a, it might end up turning into two because it's going to be pretty big. It describes and explains the most important part of my life at this moment. In fact, it describes what's keeping me alive. Three days a week, I get up at about 5.30 in the morning and take a cab about 45 minutes to a clinic where I get weighed, get my temp taken, have to get my blood pressure taken, and then I get hooked up to a machine through a catheter that's in my leg connected to my femoral artery, and I get my blood pulled out, pushed, pushed through a filter, and then put back in my body. This happens over the course of three hours, at least for me. Some people actually have to be here for five. So, I'm very grateful to only have to do it for three hours. Um, and this process is called hemodialysis. It keeps me alive. Um, here, I'll turn this. That is the machine that I use. Um, at some point, I'm probably going to get pictures, or at least a video that's a little closer. Actually, I can do it right now. That would be the big filter that I use that my blood's going through right at this moment. All of that reddish stuff you see is indeed my blood. So. Yeah, um, around the age of 12, my kidneys failed due to a fairly rare kidney disease called Alport Syndrome. Um, since my kidneys don't function, the toxins that build up in my body, same with the fluid that builds up in the body, it can't leave because your kidneys work with your bladder and your urinary tract system and all of that in order to get rid of it. So in order for the toxins to leave my body, I have to have dialysis, which yes, that means that I do not use the bathroom. I do not pee. Yeah, everybody's going to go, ha ha ha, whatever. I, I, yeah, I haven't peed in over eight years. It's kind of cool. Don't have to use public bathrooms that much. Um, all the toxins and the fluid that builds up in my body is removed from each treatment. And here's an interesting fact. I could come in weighing 135 pounds and only weigh 125. That's 10 pounds. I have pulled that off and more before comes really in handy when you have something you have to do like on Saturday and since my treatments are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that comes in real handy. It was awesome in school for prom and stuff. But um, with dialysis comes many problems. For me, it gave me a heart condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Basically that means an increased heart rate with thickened heart walls. Means my heart has to pump harder at times because it thinks I'm not getting blood to all my vital organs and stuff. And it actually causes a lot of pain. If you remember the movie The Mask, where when he first sees Cameron Diaz's character, how his heart's like pounding out of his chest. Well, I can actually sometimes see my heart do that. Not actually to the full extent of Jim Carrey's in The Mask, because, well, that's technically not possible, or at least I would hope not. But it does indeed do that I can see my heart pounding against my ribcage and moving my ribcage. Uh, your normal heart rate's supposed to be about 60 to 80, sometimes mine's at like 130. It's very painful. But, um, yeah. 
I have to take multiple medications. Let's see, let me count. Um, the metoprolol, the Nexium for the severe stomach ulcers from all the acid. Let's see, um, I wear this patch on my arm. No, it's not for birth control. No, it's not for smoking. It's um, blood pressure medication that pumps into my body 24-7. It's changed weekly. Um, I pretty much have to live on Percocet. I take two a night. I have to take 100 milligrams of Benadryl at night. I also have to take Ambien, all of that, to sleep and to be able to relax. I'm on, like, three blood pressure medications to help control that. I have restless leg syndrome, I, so I have a medicine for that. Like I said, I also have a medicine for the acid that's causing all sorts of ulcers in my stomach. I have medicine that not only controls my heart rate, but also my blood pressure. Let's see, what else? Oh, I also have what is called a phosphorus binder. Phosphorus is something that your body needs, but when you're a kidney patient, it doesn't leave your system like it's supposed to, and it can cause major problems. Um, it can cause decalcification of the bones, which means you could have, let's see, um, you could have a random day, you're sitting there, you're getting ready to stand up, and let's just say that this little piece of lead is your leg, the long bone in your leg. You can stand up in it, though, like that, and just literally break right in the middle. Not at, like, the joint or anything, just literally break right in the middle and just, like, go straight through your skin. So, yeah, I have to be very careful about that. Um, I also have to be very careful about what I eat. Most of the stuff that when you think about it, you think it's good for you, like fruit, vegetables, you have milk, cheese, anything really in the dairy. Um, there's something in, at least, if you think of the food pyramid, there's at least one thing in each of section of the food pyramid that I'm not really supposed to have a lot of. like. The milk is absolutely terrible for me, even though it has the calcium I need. Um, on top of that, like things like cheese, um, pickles. Pickles are loaded with salt. Salt is something we're also not supposed to have a lot of. If you actually, if next time you go eat, sit and look at the label where all the nutritional facts are look for something called sodium. It is salt. You will be very shocked at even how some of the healthy choice stuff and all that has so much salt in it. It's amazing at how something is supposed to be so healthy and really it's not. Um, but the four main things that dialysis patients really shouldn't have are salt, phosphorus, potassium, and fluid. Phosphorus leaves the body with calcium, which is what the phosphorus binders are. Pretty much an overdose of calcium. The potassium is found in things like potatoes, bananas, some fruit, things like that. Salt's found in everything. Even an apple has one milligram of sodium, depending on its size. So, that's also something very interesting. Things automatically have salt. They just do. Plus, people add salt to things to preserve it. So, it's very difficult to eat stuff that all you have to do is heat it. My video is almost up, so I will finish this one later.